Hello, everybody, and welcome to National Storytelling Week. I've had a tremendous week, and I know many of you have been tangling yourself up in tales, propelling yourself through plots. And like me, you might have clanged into a few cliffhangers. I really enjoyed myself. And I've met some of you on my travels reading stories. We've had a fabulous time. Now, today we've got a story with all of us together. But, oh, I tell you what, I'm a little bit cross. Grandma, well, she was supposed to be here much earlier. Look at that doorbell just going. All right, Grandma come in oh she really has made me lose my temper oh, hello, hello. Steve. what time did i say to be here really well, i know i'm a little bit late mrs c but i have on the way here popped into the library and i've been uh borrowing some books from the library mrs c well i can see that this bag Weighs a ton. How many books have you actually borrowed? Let oh, me have a little. Three, I think, Mrs. C. Well, I can count ten books in here, it's Grandma. It's okay, ten, Mrs. C. Ten. I'll take ten. That's fine. And they all seem to be on the same topic. Yes, how to make a good cocktail. Yes. How to really enjoy a party. Yes. yes. Yes, my favourite thing, Mrs. C. Mm, yes, I know what you've been up to. Well, make sure they're not late because uh, it's really important you return your books on time, isn't it? Don't worry, Mrs. Mm. C. I'm, I, I'm never late returning my books because I have to go and help out at the library. I like to have the librarian and I like to spend time putting some books away to help them out. And sometimes, Mrs. C, I'll do some reading for the very small children who come in. For some reason, they like to listen to me reading, Mrs. C. Anyway, I've um, got to go now because yes. I've just got to put yeah. the dinner on and I'll make you a lovely cup Well, of will you? you? And we just be a little bit quiet now because we're going to start our story. Okay, okay, so I'll go put, on, go I'll and put, put the kettle on. on. Yeah, go and calm down and put the kettle on and I'll see you in a bit and just be quiet through the story. Oh, what is she like? I'm actually not sure that the librarian wants her help at the library. Anyway, <laughs> let's settle down now because I've actually got a story about a library. This is a really magical adventure and I'd like you to listen along as we hear all about the library lion. And this story is by Michelle Knudsen. So settle in and have a listen to this. It's a brilliant story. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks. Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office and said, Miss Merriweather, Miss Merriweather. No running, said Miss Merriweather without even looking up. But, but there's a lion in the library, said Mr. McBee. In the library. Is he breaking any rules? asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Uh, well... No, said Mr. McBee, not really. Well, said Miss Merriweather, then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed at the card catalogue. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. And then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed a little bit nervous, but she read out the first book in a good clear voice. And well, the lion loved it. The story lady kept reading, the lion 
enjoyed it. He stayed for the next story and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. A little girl said to him, story hour is over. It's now time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he gave out an almighty roar. Roar! Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making all that noise? She demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. Well, the lion kept roaring. He sounded sad and the little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for the story hour tomorrow? She asked. The lion stopped roaring. He looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she said, yes, a nice quiet lion would certainly be allowed back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. The next day, the lion came back. You're early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour isn't till three o'clock. Well, the lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. And soon the lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias. He licked the envelopes. He let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous about the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library. His big feet were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story time and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as he walked by. How did we ever get along without him? They'd always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. That's what Mr. McBee thought. Hmm. Mr. McBee thought lions do not belong in the library. One day, after the lion had dusted the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped all the small children, he padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office to see what else there was to do. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do, actually. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool and the book was slightly out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little bit too far. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather, and she did not get up. Mr. McBee, she called after a minute, Mr. McBee. But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk and he could not hear her calling. Lion, said Miss Merriweather, please, just please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion knew exactly. He ran down the hall. No, run in. Miss Merriweather called after him. Well, he put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. 
Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down the hall towards Miss Merriweather's office, but Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of. He looked at Mr. McBee and he looked right in his eye. Then he opened his mouth very wide and he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. Roar! Very loud indeed. Mr. McBee gasped. You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. And the lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked towards the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Mer Merriweather, the, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Mrs. Merriweather's office. Well, she was not on her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind a desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now, please go and call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. No, really, Miss Merriweather called after him. The next day, things were back to normal. Well, almost. Miss Merriweather left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. Oh, I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. And at three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story corner. The story lady was just beginning her story for the children. But the lion was not there. Hmm. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they'd see a familiar furry face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day. And the lion did not come the day after that. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Merriweather. She was looking out of the window. Her voice was very quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought, actually, there was probably something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars. He looked behind bushes. He looked in backyards and bins and tree houses. And finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside, looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. And the lion did not turn round. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring aloud, unless you have a very good reason. Say if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around. But Mr. McBee, well, he was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. Is it? Mr. McBee asked Miss Merriweather in her new, well, sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Well, Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. But Miss Merriweather didn't listen because sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library.
Oh, what a fabulous story to read on National Storytelling Week. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I loved it. What is that noise in the kitchen? Are you roaring, Grandma? Are you? Are you roaring? Well, I love that story so much, Mrs. C. I was listening to it while I was making a cup of tea, and I was trying to practice my... I don't think I'm very good at it, though, Mrs. C. Perhaps a glass no. of sherry might help. Well, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't think you need to practice uh, roaring. Um, I know lots of children who'd be better at roaring than you anyway. Uh, and we don't want to get too rawsome, do we? Perhaps, <laughs> Mrs. C. The children that are watching can practice their roars after this. I'm only suggesting it. Yes, I think you're trying to cause a little bit of chaos. Hey, guess what, Grandma? I've got a really good lion joke. Are you ready? Yes, go ahead good. and see. Okay, so what is a lion's favourite story? I don't know, Mrs. C. What is a lion's favourite story? Well, it's a furry tale. Oh, you get it? That's 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 dreadful, Mrs. C. Terrible, <laughs> terrible joke. Well, Grandma, I've had a lovely time listening to the Library Lion, and I know everybody else has. Why don't you go and tidy up the kitchen? Because I know sometimes when you make a cuppa, you leave a little bit of mess. Why don't you go and have a little look? Okay, Mrs. Yes. C. I'm off. Hurry up, though, because I want to get this cup of tea, and then I'm out. Bye, children. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye, Grandma. Okay, everybody. We're going to now make a little, well, we're going to check on Grandma first that she's done her tidying up. And I'm going to send you off to enjoy the rest of your time with National Storytelling Week. And remember to give some time to your library to get immersed in the wonder of words. Thank you very much for being here. And I can't wait to read a story to you soon. Bye, everybody.